Let me get to, uh, before the beers. What's going on, man? What up? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm a data engineer, and I work for a recruiting company. So a lot of the things that you guys bring up in this panel, I see. I see, like, the backside of it, because I actually work with a lot of the data. And I can confirm that a lot of the things, such as certifications and moving around at different jobs, does actually affect what recruiters will actually reach out to you. And I will agree with, I believe his name is number uh, 16. He was saying how uh, contracting helps you get in the door. And I completely agree because I'm a contractor myself. It's extremely difficult to go on from not being in the industry, trying to get an entry level full time position because a lot of these companies, they save money on not having to pay you like all your benefits. And also another thing is it actually is, I guess it's like against like a lot of the rules when they have contractors who are treated as employees because then they'll look at you like, okay, well, what's the difference between a contractor and an, a full time employee? And and then people have actually sued certain companies in order to get a lot of those benefits. So that's why a lot of the big tech industry companies, they sit here and say, okay, you know what? We want a whole bunch of contractors. And what they'll do is they'll say, we'll give you a contract to hire position. So you sign on that contract thinking after six months to a year, okay, you're going to be put on full time. It's just contract for right now. Some people do get put on full time, but for the most part, it's really a lie. A lot of the time, they would just keep you on for forever. And you can bring it up with your manager. And this is actually one thing that I did. Everybody was like, okay, just bring it up with your manager. And she's going to go full time. Brought it up with my manager. And then probably like the next week, they let me go. And <laughs> <laughs> the reason why is because like the budget will change in the beginning of the year. Just so happens that my previous company, they lost like half a million dollars on their budget. So there's some bad things that come with being a contractor. There's some good things if you just like the flexibility. And also, so if you're available to move around, but overall, they can pretty much let you go for re any real reason. And, you know, just so happen like, oh, it's just not working out. Then the recruiter, they won't sit up here and say, OK, well, that didn't work out. Let me go ahead and try to find you another job. They will sit here and say, oh, it just didn't work out. They don't want to move forward with you. Well, the thing is with that, I prefer contracting, man. Honestly, man, I've worked both as a full time employee and also contractor. I'm currently a contractor right now. That decision when it comes to them wanting to bring you on, mostly based off value you at it right if you make yourself to a point where if they lose you they'll have to go through hell and heaven to find someone else to do your job and replace your knowledge they will do whatever they can to keep you like they will move heaven and earth to keep you on the staff if you are that valuable to that to your environment but if you basically are just another you know warm ass in the seat and it really can just you know plug and play then you know it's, it's not really too much of a decision for them to be like yeah okay uh no not to say that you were in that situation before the billions i don't know what the current status of that company hell they might have been going bankrupt i don't know but i'm just saying in general that's typically a decision making factor are you indispensable right if they want to bring you on and you basically have proven yourself that on a day-to-day -day basis that you know how to solve problems and you get done and you build out certain projects on time, then most companies that I dealt with anyway would happily bring you on. And I was going to say, I agree with you, bro, Truth. I've always heard like, you know, being indispensable, like actually doing something that nobody else does. One of the things that you can probably do if you want to become indispensable, in addition to just doing your job, finishing up the projects on time, but also helping out with streamlining people's communication by doing stuff like, okay, I use G Suite. So you can use Google Sheets or you can use Excel spreadsheets if you don't have Google G Suite. But also like pretty much just documenting a lot of the different things that you do. Also, like if you are a data engineer like me, doing stuff like documenting different conversations, like by taking meeting notes, doing stuff like you have an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheet that has all the like tables that you're working with and all new fields that you're coming out with. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. And also setting up different meetings with your manager and also other people internally that can help you out. And also bringing up new ways and new ideas ideas by like saying oh you know what i heard of that about this software that can also help us out such as if you use google cloud platform you can use something like cloud run that's like another one of their products that they use so you know all those kind of things can help you to become indispensable and keep it techie you have something no i was just gonna add on to what you said bro true and i agree with both of you guys it's 100 percent true but it goes back to what you stated earlier you got to always have that thirst for knowledge and learning through when you get into this field that's why i talk 
talk about open source software, whatever. I'm just using that as an example, but as well as Kubernetes and all these different new technologies that are coming out, you got to keep that thirst for learning more to add to your value. The more you add to your value, the less likely you'll get top when it comes down to it because that's happened to me before as well i've worked for a company i did two years of work for that company and boom the budget doesn't afford you anymore we need to go down and cut this position and it happened across the board from the top to the bottom because basically a company came in and bought that company and was trying to flip that company by turning a profit just selling off the business once they made it profitable they cut from the top to the bottom you know what i'm saying and switched out management switched out and my position was one of those positions so that does happen especially in the contracting world and i've done contracting for years too but go ahead bro the truth so in addition to that bro you need to make sure you keep track of all the project work that you do anytime you solve a major issue a major problem write that down because again you would think it's nothing right you would think that okay this is day-to-day thing but these are certain key points you can bring up in a negotiation. These are certain things that you can bring up. Look, I did this, this, I finished this project on time. In addition to that, you have some additional bullet points to add to your resume. So when you're done with that employment, you can look back onto your notes. Okay, I did this. I may add that to my resume. Oh, this is a huge project I finished. Add that to your resume. So be sure to keep track of everything that you do, especially significant problems that you solve. Keep track of them because on a day to day, you will lose track of right after a month you forget that you did xyz mm -hmm. make sure you write it down document okay. everything sure did let me uh maurice anderson let me get to you man you've been patient and we got a uh, uh games a got devil's bang what's, what's going on maurice i was going on the brother um, i forgot his name keep it techie for your profile you want to make sure you have a linkedin profile all the contracts you have done i want to make sure i put on my linkedin profile yeah you can have a github but you want to have that make sure that experience back up that github because it will check you probably never heard of me but that's one of my i guess you can call it talking points i always yeah. say linkedin is very important because i mean it is a portfolio at the end of the day that's a resume slash portfolio and you can track everything you can put your certifications in there you can put your right. certification numbers so you can verify them on comptia or ccna website however they verification process works to verify that you actually have that certification you can also get and one of the most important things i always say is getting people to put referrals under your linkedin profile as well yeah and i'm sorry go ahead man you on the right point bro go ahead no you guys touch every point i can't even say no more talking about you guys cover everything yeah, they, about, they, they, I was going to get on to them about the cop tier, about to tell people, like, make sure you can do cop tier, but make sure if you start out after high school, like 18, 19, 20, because you don't want to have those certifications in your 30s or mid 30s or even your 40s, because the recruiter is going to look down on you like, hey, if this high school is having the same certification, they're going to look down on your resume. Oh, what's going on, Gabe? Appreciate you coming through, man. What up, man? Hey, I was going to kind of say, because I just came in during the conversation about contracting and kind of what that conversation was. And kind of what I'm realizing more and more are a couple of different things. One thing is that one is that as you skill up, as you get additional certs, you become more expensive to any organization. So when you talk about individuals that are expendable, when you talk about not being or being in a position where they can't find, no, really, it doesn't really matter on your skills because they can find someone lower to do your same skills. It matters on how much you cost to the business. And that's why I kind of got out of the contracting type of world because I'm like, man, I'm just too expensive. I started talking to recruiters and everything and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I got to go within the organization. I don't know if anybody else had that same experience, but it became a point where I'm like, I didn't want to just keep bouncing around from contract to contract to contract, getting more and more skills, becoming more and more expensive. And organizations sent, pretty much saying you skilled out of this thing or you too expensive to bring them to my business. But that's what I wanted to start off with. I don't know if anybody had anything else with that. Yeah, Gabe, well, it sounds as though you hit your ceiling as far as the price point that you can go to. And then that's when conversation comes into, do you want to do consulting outside of that or even trying to go into management? And not everybody has a skill to be manager, but it sounds like being a contractor and then going full time might you know be the best bet for that kind of situation. Oh, I'm not asking for advice about a situation. Oh, I yeah. Did. That was kind of some of my past experience. That's Gabe, hey, he don't need advice. Uh, he don't I need advice. He's in the chat, too. <laughs> I was not about to <laughs> need advice. I specifically asked if anybody had had that same type of experience and what they had went through, but... It's all good. I've experienced it as well. I mean, it's very hard once you get to a certain level to actually get positions that are kind of lower if you need to. Because, I mean, I've been in situations doing contract work 
like we are all talking about where contract ended unexpectedly. And so you have to find a job to keep going. You can wait around, but I always like to keep busy. So I try to hop into anything. I've actually taken positions where I've had to, you know, step down, but it was very hard to actually get in to those types of positions because they look at you as overqualified as well as too expensive because of your background. I've been turned down from positions because, you know, I have a bachelor's degree and the position doesn't require a bachelor's degree. And I could tell by the tone during the interview process that, oh, yeah, this guy's not going to be around too much longer. You know what I'm saying? If, I got told because of or? his experience and oh, background. Go ahead. One way that you can ensure you, know, you get paid what you weigh is make sure you remain valuable to the current market, right? If companies out here clamoring for someone that has a particular set of skills, if you are able to demonstrate your skill set, they're willing to pay you what the market is demanding. I mean, that's just basic market dynamics. If there's a rarity out there that companies are looking to fill a position that they cannot find, most people don't have these, a certain skill set, the market price is going to be what the market price is. You can't really go by the market because Atlanta pay different than Florida pay. So if I have those but, skills in Florida, I want to make sure, like for instance, for cybersecurity or DevOps engineer, the market is 180 and Florida is 60,000. So you want to make sure- What? what? Yeah. So, oh, man, how you go from 180 to 60,000? Yeah. I don't know, man. That, that, that don't even make sense, bro. Saying. That's what I'm saying. If you have those skills in that state. Are we talking about Zimbabwe dollars here, bro? What skills worth 60,000 in one state and 180,000? Especially when they were. Yeah, like, come on, man. That's exactly what he's talking about. Now, they do try to get you on like cost of living and like how much wherever like the company is based. It's like, of course, they're going to pay more or less where they are, but it shouldn't be too drastic. It shouldn't be too drastic. It may be like. I think he was just going to the extreme stream based on what he's saying i get exactly what he's saying a better example would have been like 180 to 160 if you go to a different place or 120 if you go to a different yeah. place i have seen yeah, that that's, for the that's same typically type of based yeah, yeah that's so, typically based on like the cost of living and whatever yeah, the job living. yeah exactly but, you know there's, there's no there's no there's no wide variance right. between 60,000 and 180 bro there's no way that you oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, not that's, happening yeah. bro <laughs> i'm sorry you have to also make sure that you look at the history of the company right if you're dealing with a startup are you dealing with a company that's on a verge of bankruptcy? They don't have to let you go off of humbug, right? Because you have these certain startups that just want to get sold and they don't give a f about the employees. You have to look at a site called Glassdoor and that'll let you know the environment that you may be getting hired into. And now starting out, go for these startup companies. Go ahead and go to these resume mill companies where they just burn and turn employees just to get your experience up. But if you're looking for certain environments where you're going to be steady, even as a contract or a permanent employee, you want to ensure that you're going into a company that you're willing to work at every day.